Hello, just another segment from the desk of Greg Bodo. I have a couple of short comments I'd like to make from things that I'm reading recently in the media or hearing on the news, probably the same news and the same media that you all are exposed to. One of the things that I want to point out is one of the greatest advertising industries I'm seeing today are big investment companies. You name them, sometimes they're affectionately called wirehouses. You can name the investment company, I don't want to get into that, but the point is, one of the things that we have to remember is the investment companies to be in business have to sell two things, stocks, bonds, and to a small degree, other financial assets. Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong. What I'm saying is that we have to be not too vulnerable to their advertising, recognizing that their advertising is certainly slanted to the financial assets that they sell. Those financial assets may or may not be in the seniors' best interest, and my greatest interest is how seniors are served in this financial marketplace. The consideration of risk, the consideration of time frames for the availability of funds in the future, or maybe called liquidity. So getting away from the stocks and bonds things, let's talk about some other areas that people don't think of, and they certainly aren't offered these things from the big investment companies. Now, I hear a lot about gold. My goodness, we are just being overwhelmed with gold commercials, gold ads, everything from AARP to Reader's Digest, I even saw, have gold ads in them. Now, let's think about something. Gold is a very valuable resource. Gold is a precious metal. There's no doubt about that. Gold is also setting all-time record highs. Most of the most investors that are not professional investors and not institutions generally invest on the wrong cycle, the wrong end of every cycle. Now, let me give you an example. There's an old adage that says buy low and sell high. Makes kind of sense, but if you're buying gold at the all-time high, well, is that probably the best time to go to buy your gold? Now, I didn't say that gold won't go higher from here. I didn't say that. I also didn't say that gold will come down from where it is. I didn't say that either. What I am saying is for the small investor, that's us, the senior retiree, that there's a great deal more opportunity to lose money in gold than there is to make money just based on the investment cycles of gold. Gold is being highly overtouted. Let me give you another thought process. Well, if you took 5 or even more aggressive 10% of your net worth and put it in gold, and gold tripled in value, would it have really affected your net worth a great deal? My point is, the opportunity for risk of 10% of your assets is far greater than your opportunity for reward as it really impacts your net worth. Now, certainly my comments are general and they're not for everybody. I recognize that. I'm just giving you some food for thought. Also, I have seen uh, evidence that people are going far, far too deeply into their gold positions without really understanding how this asset fluctuates. And I do want to point out to you something. You can have gold, that's great. But if you have 40 pounds of gold, and I have one cow, and it's the last cow, and you're hungry, I win. Maybe there are other assets that we should be looking at as well. Enough about gold. You know, people overlook the opportunities to invest in different types of, we'll call them alternative assets. An alternative asset might be real estate. Now, when I say real estate to the average uh, senior non-institutional investor, I find that most people's mind goes immediately to residential real estate and the housing market. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm talking about different kinds of real estate. Real estate, think of it this way, is an asset class. An asset class that is not correlated to the ups and downs of the stock market. Within an asset class called real estate, there are also sub-asset classes like commercial, like residential, within residential like apartment complexes versus individual homes. In this segment, that's not what I'm talking about. Let's go on the commercial side. Ever shop in a Walgreens, a Walmart, a Home Depot? Hmm. You know, they don't own their real estate. That real estate is built and developed specifically for them and leased back to them on very long-term leases with not only escalators in their rent, but oftentimes a rent that is predicated on the gross volume of sales in that particular store. There will be a base rent, 
and then there will be an increased rate based upon the receipts of those stores which are aud audited and and uh, and monitored. Now, that isn't always the case. It's sometimes the case. I'm not trying to give you an MBA in, in investment real estate right now. What I'm trying to do is give you some idea of you don't know what you don't know, and there are other things out there for you to learn about. So if we're talking about real estate in the commercial marketplace, maybe some of your minds are going to, oh, he means a REIT. Well, a REIT is just an investment structure. REIT is Real Estate Investment Trust. That's the acronym, REIT. Well, a REIT is just a, a structure. It is not a thing. Now, a REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, it can be publicly traded, meaning you can buy the shares of that REIT on the stock market, or it can be a non-traded REIT, which means it's privately held. You cannot buy the shares of stock on the stock market, which brings you an advantage and a disadvantage. The disadvantage is if you buy a non-traded REIT, it does not liquid immediately. Like, if you buy a traded REIT on the stock exchange, you can sell it like any stock anytime you want and have your money in five business days. There's the disadvantage. But the advantage of a non-traded REIT is that because it is not subject to the fluctuation of the stock market, it does not have that risk pressure. The only thing that, that, that predicates its value is the value of the real estate and the rental income from that real estate. Some of these projects start with 5 to 7% as an income. It's paid to you as a dividend. Where does that come from? The rents on that particular real estate. The real estate will be sold later. I don't know. Later is very specific. So maybe between 5 and 7 years, 5 and 10 years. But the real estate will be sold later, presumably at a higher price, after you've collected the rent for all this period of time. Is that an appropriate investment? I have no idea because I don't know who's watching this segment. But it's something that we should know about if we're going to avail, if we're going to evaluate what is available to us to help us create a hedge against inflation in our retirement dollars, to help us not have to liquidate our stocks, bonds, and cash in down markets to be able to support ourselves as we age and things have lower rates. Something else that you might think of is the ownership of other kinds of assets. Did you ever complain at the gas pump, at the cost of gas, at the cost of the oil that generates the gas? of the cost of the gas that fuels your appliances at home. Did you ever think that there are ways that you actually can own the asset? Now, I don't mean that you go buy barrels of oil and stock them up in your backyard. That's not what I mean. But there are direct ownership ways through participation of legal structures that you actually can own the current value and then the future value of gas and oil and gasoline and other products. Reach out, begin to find out who, how you can do some of these things. As a matter of fact, we're working right now with a project that is a franchise ownership. You actually own a franchise in an operating business. The operating business has 15 years of experience. The operating business has auditable returns for the last five years. And in fact, you have cash revenues. As a matter of fact, you will share in 16.5% of the receipts of that business on this private franchise without ever having to lift a finger because you don't have to be an active investor going to the franchise every day and managing the business. The business is managed for you. You're a passive investor with other people. Would that interest you? Well, you can immediately say, no, that wouldn't interest me. Or you can immediately say, yo, oh, yes, that would interest me. Neither of those two things are the right answer. The right answer would be, I'd like to find out what I don't know open up my thinking a little bit, find out what else is available to me. You know, my grandmother used to say, and so did yours. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. That's because our grandmothers didn't know what else there was available, and they only knew what they already knew. Let's think more like Ronald Reagan. Trust, but verify. Thanks, folks, for joining us today. Until the next segment of From the Desk of Greg Boyle.